Coming up in this video, air meets the sea, as I take you to the unexplored north side of LaGuardia Airport, which is inaccessible to most people since it's on the water. Since this channel has got LaGuardia covered, I'm happy to bring you there by the only means of transportation that nature allows. I'm going to go by boat, and as always, you're coming along with me. It's a beautiful day in the Big Apple. The sun is out, and it's not too windy, so I'm thinking about one specific place to go. Ah, LaGuardia Airport. You can arrive there by bus, you can arrive by car, but today, I'm going to be arriving by boat. Come with me as I go to LaGuardia via a unconventional method. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I provide a very unique aspect of aviation that most people don't get to experience on a regular basis. Today, I'm going to continue doing that by bringing you to LaGuardia Airport by boat. That means that we're going to go into Flushing Bay and check out LaGuardia Airport operations by sea. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to dock our boat there. However, we will get some really up close and personal views of what's going on at LaGuardia. It's a beautiful day for flying and a beautiful day for boating. So come along with me. Today, the wind is favorable for arriving aircraft to land on runway 22 and departing aircraft to depart on runway 31. Boating, like flying, is very dependent on the weather. While we might not think twice about getting into our cars for a drive on a windy day, just like flying, the wind needs to be considered while boating. Today, the wind is coming out of the west-southwest, so arriving flights will be landing on runway 22 and departures will be taking off on runway 31, and I'm considering the direction of the wind as I pull out of the dock. Once underway, there are no stops at all until we get to the pier that's home to the beginning of runway 22. And in the distance, I can see arrival to runway 22 with a departure off of runway 31 just behind it. This is why I love LaGuardia. The action is close with departing traffic depending on arriving traffic's position before the flight can take off. Both departures and arrivals fly at a low altitude over the Bronx as the approach to runway 22 is over the eastern side of the Bronx and arrivals to runway 31 generally turn to the right after takeoff and climb over the Bronx. Now, if going to LaGuardia by boat seems unfathomable to you, well, it actually was a thing many years ago. The Delta Shuttle used to operate out of LaGuardia's Marine Air Terminal, and Delta Airlines actually provided ferry service from Manhattan directly to the Marine Air Terminal. This saved travelers the hassle of New York City traffic. Today, Spirit Airlines operates out of the Marine Air Terminal, but there's no such service. Imagine yellow Spirit boats going back and forth between Manhattan and LaGuardia. Today, I'm doing it myself, but there's no place to dock. We're getting closer to the airport. That is a United A319 from Chicago O'Hare. And from this position, Manhattan is a perfect backdrop. One great thing about being on the water is that you can see waves caused by the wind and how it corresponds to a headwind for both arrivals and departing flights. Well, I've made it to LaGuardia Airport. I'm actually in the East River, just north of runway 22. Runway 22 is actually located right over there. You can see there's a boat over there and behind it is the approach lights, the ALS or approach lighting system to runway 22. Runway 22 is the arrival runway and runway 31 is the departure runway. However, at the moment there is a lull in departures off of runway 31. There's actually no one taking off. So right now it's just plane after plane after plane coming into runway 22 with no interference from departures off of runway 31. When there are departures off of runway 31, the LaGuardia control tower will issue takeoff clearance to aircraft as the aircraft is touching down on runway 22. Now because the intersection is kind of far down, the controller must make sure that there's a decent gap between arrivals in order to issue the aircraft takeoff clearance. Right now I see in the distance there's a JetBlue aircraft uh, coming up on a pretty short final so it probably wouldn't be advisable to issue an aircraft takeoff clearance at the moment right now. I'll swing the camera around this way so you can see it. And it's right over there. This JetBlue Embraer 190 is coming in from a rather short flight from the island of Nantucket. While most arrivals today are approaching LaGuardia from the southwest, this plane is coming from the east, and in order to fly to LaGuardia, it had to fly up northern Connecticut, then turn to the south for a straight in landing to runway 22. So the controller needed to create a gap of flights from the southwest to fit in this plane by having southwestern arrivals extend their downwind leg before turning back around to land on runway 22. We're approaching the approach end of runway 22. Runway 22 has an approach light pier that extends into the East River, so it's impossible to get to the beginning of the runway directly below the airplanes because the pier's in the way. I was hoping runway 31 would have been the landing runway since there are no approach lights to runway 31 and you can go directly below it. Here's the approach light system for runway 22. Here comes a Southwest 737 on final for runway 22. Arrivals to LaGuardia will get priority and will come straight in and will only be told to abort a landing due to conflict. Aircraft on final approach get their spacing from the previous controller at the New York Approach Control Facility in Nassau County before handed off to LaGuardia Control Tower. This includes issuing speed restrictions to slow aircraft down to ensure adequate separation.
This American Eagle Embraer is basically doing what the Southwest plane just ahead did. Now, if you want to be directly under planes in a more accessible place, when the wind is out of the north, runway 4 is a commonly used arrival runway, and you can actually stand in a park even closer to the runway than where I am now, but this video is about LaGuardia by boat, and runway 22 is the landing runway now. Behind me there is another JetBlue Embraer 190. This time it's coming in from Boston Logan. That aircraft pretty much flew a straight in approach to runway 22. Now, with runway 31 being the departure runway, all aircraft that take off from runway 31, and we've got an aircraft lifting off right over there, take off in the general direction of the west, and that is towards Manhattan, which you can see in the distance behind me. Because of that, aircraft that are coming to New York City from the southwest need to pass by LaGuardia Airport. And in today's case all aircraft will pass by LaGuardia Airport in the airspace to the east of LaGuardia before they make a U-turn and come back around and land on runway 22. Of course that airspace is reserved for departure. That airplane behind me came from Raleigh-Durham. So as those aircraft come in, they come in from the southwest. They then approach New York City, New York Harbor from the Brooklyn and Queens area. They then fly northbound to the east of LaGuardia, make a left-hand turn and join the final approach course to runway 22, all to avoid departures off of runway 31 today. And now that that plane has just landed, the tower has issued takeoff clearance to a Delta A321 headed to Fort Lauderdale on runway 31. This aircraft's destination is to the south, but after taking off to the northwest on the 7,000-foot-long runway 31, the plane turns even further to the north as part of a standard climb-out. It's not until when the aircraft reaches the northern part of Manhattan that the controller will turn the plane southbound. The departure clearly shows why arrivals from the south can't utilize the airspace around Manhattan to set up for an approach to runway 22. Here we can see an airplane coming in from the south, passing by the airport to the east. That's away from Manhattan, so that the Manhattan airspace can be used for climbing aircraft. After proceeding to the northeast, arrivals from the south like this one continue around in a left turn over the Bronx or Westchester to turn back around to runway 22 under the guidance of the approach controller. The plane about to turn back to the airport will be following this airplane, a Delta Connection CRJ-900 operated by Endeavor Air from Richmond, Virginia, on final approach over the East River for runway 22. And behind it, here's that arrival turning its final left turn to runway 22, and as soon as the Endeavor CRJ-900 lands, another plane takes off on runway 31. No. LaGuardia is a carefully coordinated ballet of arrivals avoiding departures. Here comes a Delta A321, the largest aircraft type with scheduled service to LaGuardia. As this aircraft neared the runway, the tower issued takeoff clearance to another airplane on runway 31 just before this plane lands. From this angle, we get a great perspective of how their paths would have crossed at the intersection of the two runways and how important timing is at this very tight airport. Now, it's not always that there'll be a departure between arrivals. In this case, a plane is landing on runway 22, but there was no departure prior to its landing. At the time of filming this, there happened to be low departure demand for some periods, and the only airport action was arriving flights. Even if the departure demand is there, if arrivals are too close to each other, the tower controller may not issue takeoff clearance to an aircraft waiting on runway 31 because there simply isn't enough space in the gap. Here's a rare close-up view of the approach lights, which are situated on a pier extending from the center of the runway. The approach lights are a component of the instrument landing system to help pilots locate the runway during bad weather. But on a day like this, the runway of course is visible for miles. This truly is one of the more unique approach light systems since it's entirely over the water. There are approach lights on the other side of the runway for landing on runway 4, and these lights pass over roadways and a public park. Between the runway 22 approach lights and the runway itself is an engineered material arresting system in case any runway 4 arrivals land long. This will slow them down. 
There are approach lights for all runways at LaGuardia except for landing at runway 31, but this aircraft that's taking off on runway 31 is about to pass over approach lights for runway 13, a rarely used runway for landing. The runway 13 approach lights are also on a pier extending out over the water just south of Rikers Island. As much as I wish I could dock here, there's no place to do so, so I'm just going to spend a few more minutes here admiring the flights here at LaGuardia before returning to port. What a unique operation this is. Well, thanks so much for joining me on this nice little trip to LaGuardia Airport from a different point of view. Remember that if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and like button, and be assured that I'll be on an airplane with you again very soon. Thanks, everybody, and take care.